Hi YouTube, Darth here. This is Yes or No, a weapon review series where I give a clear and concise answer as to what weapons you should be using in Battlefield 4. Today we're back to the assault rifles with the L85A2, a much requested bullpup rifle. Once upon a time, this was my go-to assault rifle before it got nerfed and I subsequently tried other things. I haven't used it as much since, but how has it held up? Should you use the L85A2, yes or no? Yes, a definite yes. The L85A2 is one of the top performing assault rifles in the game. Even after its changes during the course of the game's balance, it's still easily a go-to weapon for anybody looking to dominate as assault. So let's talk about what makes it so good. As a bullpup weapon, the L85A2 enjoys certain advantages for a few trade-offs. The bullpup design gives the L85A2 much better performance on the move, reducing its starting spread when moving and shooting. Additionally, the hipfire benefits in close quarters are also quite nice and put the L85A2 a notch above the other mid-700 RPM rifles in CQB. The trade-off is a slightly higher starting spread when standing and aiming down sights. At 640 meters per second, the bullet velocity is better than the average assault rifle. Between the two similar performing Ace-23 and M416, the L85A2 is superior in this respect. More bullet velocity means less lead time to targets at range, and that's going to come in handy with the next point. The L85A2 has a recoil pattern that is extremely predictable. The left-right deviation is dead even at 0.225 degrees in either direction per shot. The upwards recoil is a very forgiving 0.33 degrees per shot. Combined with the rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute, the L85A2 is quite easy to control. This gives it the power to bring down targets at medium range or longer. The cherry on top of the accuracy stats is the low first shot recoil multiplier of the L85A2. At only a 1.7 times multiplier, it's the second lowest of all the assault rifles, meaning that your bursts are going to be pretty easy to predict. You're not going to have to fight the gun very much after the first shot, and it certainly is in tune with the rest of the gun's accuracy stats. What that all means is a weapon that can put bullets on target better at close range, on the move, and performs adeptly at medium and longer ranges. It's not going to win heads up against close quarters weapons, but the L85A2 is a jack of all trades kind of gun. It does have a fault though, so let's look at that now. At 2.55 seconds for the short reload, the L85A2 isn't the worst of the assault rifles, but it isn't even close to the best. Worse still, the long reload is a very high 3.75 seconds. That's a difference of 1.2 seconds between the two, and the long reload is the second worst among the assault rifles, and practically an eternity for an assault player. It's easy enough to avoid though by practicing careful enough ammo management. And that's it! The standout drawback of the L85A2 is easily negated by not running the weapon dry. The damage per second of the L85A2 is very middling and nothing special at close range. But the L85A2 is all about versatility, accuracy, and being an asset to the player, something it delivers on quite well. The L85A2 is an extremely reliable weapon when it comes to controlling the recoil. For the most part, you only have to counter the upwards recoil. With no attachments, the upwards recoil of the L85A2 is 0.33 up, 0.225 left, and 0.225 right. With a very slight first shot recoil multiplier of only 1.7, this means that after the initial hiccup, the weapon is going to go roughly straight up and balloon outwards like a long V. Controlling the weapon is therefore very easy as you only need to pull straight down. Like pretty much every weapon, this means that the weapon is going to continue to produce a wider spread as long as you hold down the trigger. The L85A2 kills in 5 shots on normal. You'll want to plan to do 5 round bursts up close. Further away, you'll need 6 bullets to get a kill on target, assuming they all land where they need to. Don't be afraid of overbursting the weapon as the first shot recoil multiplier is extremely forgiving. As I've said, the L85A2 is a very versatile weapon, and not a lot of specialization in your tactics is needed in order to use the L85A2. I'd say it's a good weapon for conquest specifically because it performs well up close and at longer ranges. It's probably not the best weapon for non-objective gameplay and not the best in close quarters, but it can certainly hang in there. As it is a bullpup weapon, you'll want to get use out of those movement and hipfire bonuses. The L85A2 can certainly deal with targets in close quarters quite well if you manage when to hipfire. In general, if a target is closer than 10 to 15 meters, I typically go for a hipfire shot, especially if they're already shooting at me. I'll talk more about attachments in the next section, but for now know that the L85A2 is pretty competent at hipfire even without lasers or hipfire underbarrel attachments. 
The one caveat that every L85A2 user should be well aware of is the huge penalty to the long reload. The short reload isn't very bad at 2.55 seconds, but the long is a whopping 3.75 seconds. Remember to reload between engagements and this shouldn't come to bite you too often. If you find yourself in protracted close quarters battles, you'll want to have your secondary on speed dial. I tend to favor the G18 and Shorty these days as I press the objectives pretty commonly as assault. Once your targets are dead and your minimap is clear, then reload your L85A2. When talking about bullpups and attachments, there's certainly a temptation out there to throw a bunch of CQB attachments on the L85A2 and the weapon really doesn't need them. Of course, a laser couldn't hurt. Doing my usual research by cross-referencing BF4Stats.com leaderboards with Battlelog, it seems the most popular loadout for top players is a red dot sight, no accessory, heavy barrel, and stubby grip. I found there wasn't a lot of variation on this weapon compared with others I've reviewed. But what did I end up preferring? For my sight, I went with the Coyote. Personal preference on this one, but I think the Coyote is pretty much my go-to sight for just about every weapon. In BF3 I preferred the Cobra, but in BF4 with the introduction of the Coyote, I think it's simply a matter of having a bit more clarity when aiming down sights without having to worry about some of the housing getting in the way of the targets. I do, however, think that the indicators are a bit more readable on the Cobra. Now the L85A2 is a bit unique with the accessory. I went with the laser, but I could certainly see giving the laser a pass on this weapon. Specifically because it seems like the laser is bugged on the L85A2 as the HUD will not show the status of the laser. Now, assuming you can't make out the actual laser, on normal you can get around this by using your crosshairs and toggling your laser to see the state. Smaller crosshair generally means the laser is on. As for other accessories, I also tried the 2X magnifier but found it to be annoyingly huge and distracting. For the barrel, you should definitely go with the heavy barrel. It reduces that bullpup 0.25 degree initial spread to half its starting value, decreases the spread increase per shot, and improves the on-the-move capability of the weapon. These are all things that are extremely beneficial to the L85A2. To pair that up with the underbarrel, I went with the stubby grip. It'll further decrease that maximum spread, helping to dial in the accuracy of the L85A2. The first shot recoil multiplier of this weapon is already extremely low, so there's no reason to worry about that when considering a grip. Alternatively, you might consider an ergo or vertical grip. But I think that the L85A2 already has enough going on for it in the on-the-move bonuses that the stubby grip is the clear victor here. With the Coyote Laser Heavy Barrel Stubby setup, I found the L85A2 to be a particularly effective weapon at very nearly every range. The Laser gave it a bit of an extra bump in close quarters, and the Stubby and Heavy Barrel combination turned the weapon into a laser at longer ranges. It really was not a chore to go on very long kill streaks with the L85A2 to the point where I was frequently running out of all my ammunition. So the L85A2 remains one of my favorite weapons in Battlefield 4. I had a fun time with this video and reconnecting with a great gun. It was certainly a nice switch after last week's underperformer, the UMP9. The L85A2, on the other hand, is definitely one of the top weapons of Battlefield 4 and a definite yes. If you find yourself liking the L85A2, you could also try the M416. It's one of the three best all-rounders in the assault class and really favors players who like to reload a lot with its blazing fast reload time. If for some reason you don't like the all-rounder weapons and need something with a bit more kick at close range, you can certainly try the AAK-971. The AAK-971 gives up a lot of the versatility of the other top-tier assault rifles and cashes it in for a victory dance at close range. That's it for this episode of Yes or No. If there's something you think I missed, or if you have a particularly different take on the L85A2, please let me know in the comments below. If there's a weapon you'd like to see reviewed on this series, leave a comment indicating which weapon. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.